Okay, good morning everybody. We're back at it again. Uh, we're going to try to get us a little deer head knocked out today. Uh, these here kind of turn out being some of our best sellers. Uh, the main thing is uh, how to take the plug out without uh, cutting the horn. So, you know, but you want to take your time here. You don't want to rush the opening of the horns out. Uh, so, First thing I do is like to start from the front and uh, I cut out the, the front all the way to the ear so that uh, right down the side of his horn, I just cut right down by the horn as pretty close as I can, you know, to the finished cut and then I cut out the section between that and the plug. So take that all the way back to uh, about where the ear is uh, if you was to look at it straight up and down so that uh, you don't want to get into his main beam that's where some carvers uh, get in a hurry and they uh, might get cutting into the main beam so like I say I like to start from the front and work all the way back to his ear and uh, then I'll spin him around and come in from the back side because from the front you can't see where his horns are. Again, you kind of lose the sight of where the main beams are. If you flip him around, you'll be able to see his rubbing tines and the rest of his main beam. So I cut the horn, uh, the plug off t at the height just above his rubbing tines or hooking tines and be careful here that you don't cut into his his uh, main beam where it comes into his skull. So just keep in mind where his main beams is. If you look, you can see it from the back where they go all the way down. But uh, so here I am cutting cutting a little wood between there and his hooking tie. That's so his main beam tie. So, it's just, take your time. Don't get in no hurry right here. But we still got a lot of wood that's uh, going to be between the ears and the main beam. And you want to be real careful when you go to cutting that out. But uh, first you want to open the horns up as much as you can. Uh, and here you can see that uh, we got spun back around see if we can see where the main beams are. We just try to trim that extra wood off in front of his horn. So there's some wood here in the front that needs to be pushed back just a little bit. So this is uh, the most critical part of the getting the horn out is uh, just not getting in a hurry and cutting into his horn back here. Uh, Have a little patience. So you see, we just about to get the horns pretty much found here, but we still got a lot of a lot of wood uh, between the ears and the main beam of the horn. So as soon as we get through pushing these uh, that wood back around the hooking time. Now let's start trying to find that ear a little bit. So just want to go in real slow and careful to cut between the horn and the uh, ear. And there's a there ain't a lot of room in there for your saw, but there is enough room to put your saw in there and cut it out without cutting the ear too much or the horn. But the main thing is just go about it real slow. And uh, keep in mind the ear and the horn at the same time. You try to keep it about a saw width blade is the bigger hole you want there. And here I am just basically thinning the horns up. 
and there I'm starting to open that ear up a little bit more over on that side cut between the main beam and the ear same thing here still just kind of brushing on the horn and pushing them back real slow and then we're going to go ahead and define the stump that he's uh, sitting on we just kind of separate the stump root from the base and that's all I'm doing on the back side same thing digging digging around the roots and here we are starting to bark the stump kind of growing on the top of the stump showing where the bark and old wood on the top kind of circle I'd say the deer is probably the slowest uh, rough out that we have to finish. It probably take me 25 minutes or so to, to get it done. It's definitely worth it. So we pretty much got the Post the saw work done there, and now I'm just going in with the angle grinder. And you can see I got my hand on the outside of the horn, which uh, helps take away vibration. So, you know, vibration is usually the where people mess up, you know, breaking the horn and by letting vibration get carried away. It really ain't hard, hard. It's just uh, you can't get in too big a hurry. It can be broken, but uh, they're tougher than you think they are. Well, here we are just kind of sanding the back side of it. Cleaning the base up. We're just still in there taking our time. Trying to sand the horn back a little bit. I don't like to sand the body much with the uh, angle grinder though. I like to, uh, you know, I usually use a belt sander and a brush to finish the body off. But here I am with a, a saber bit, getting in, taking out some of the sharp corners on the inside of the horns. Like I say, it's just a little bit slower on these deer horns than some of the other rough out, but not that bad. We're still just going in and smoothing up the horns. And this is, you know, that vice works really good for the deer. You can tilt him at angles to see him from up above and get into some of the angles a little better. But. Thank you. 
And now we got the small Dremel outfit and start putting some texture in the base of the horn here. You know, where the horn meets the skull, you uh, outline it real good. And uh, still got to open the ears up. We hadn't got to that yet. And right here, working between the ear and the skull, just trying to get that separation in there. So we just start putting some more texture in the horn. We kind of got the base set. Now I'm kind of carving into that rough, knobby looking stuff at the base of his horn. Uh, so there are several different tools you can use for that. I'm just using a small, straight saber bit that goes in the Dremel. So here we are, you know, trying to open his ears up a little bit. Put the inside cup of his ear. And here I am with a, using an eye tool, which is kind of like a dovetail saber bit to uh, carve all the texture into the horns. You know, the, the bottom half of the horn got a lot of texture in it. Uh, so, you just run around and rough it up. So that's all we're doing, just put the texture on the backside of the horn here. Get ready to pop his eyes in. See if we can't wake him up. Maybe I need to pop a teller's eyes in. I see a couple of sharp spots on the back of his horn there I'm trying to wipe out. We got his eyes in. Now we're going to start on his nose. We're Cutting on his nostrils here. I'm going to throw his mouth in while I've got this tool down here. Putting his nostrils deep holes in, kind of the round one, you know, put the slits in with the eye tool, put the nostril holes in a little bit bigger. Here I am kind of pushing on the back side of the ear between that and the horn. Kind of, just kind of pushing a little bit of that wood back. Just a little bit. So, okay, I'm going to get the brush out. See if we can get some of that fuzz off of him. I, I do a lot of deer. They sell really good. Here I am with the Makita belt sander. I like to use it for the, you know, the slicking up the skin and stuff. It just uh, cleans them up real good without leaving a lot of texture. Because normally I stain them and it does a good job. So it looks like we about finally got through with the power tools on this thing. Let's get a little fire on this thing and start uh, getting some color on it. 90% of the time I use stain on my deer. 
I uh, use mainly uh, black walnut for the dark and gold note for the light color on him, or, or the, the main color. And then we're going to be staining him here in a little bit and he'll look a lot better. We'll get a little stain on him. I thought we'd kind of go over the stuff that we use basically on coloring our carvings here. Uh, our main things, I got some dyes here that I call, made by Mixall that you can mix with just about anything. Uh, I use basically water for the 90% of it. Uh, mix, you know, the dye with water. It's real easy to keep clean in my airbrush and stuff. But what I probably use even more than the colors is uh, men wax stain. I like gold note. It's probably my favorite light color. And then I use fentanyl and black walnut for my dark colors. Men wax make hundreds of different colors. I basically use two. And as far as airbrush system, I got cheap Harbor Freight airbrush uh, stuff, or you can get them on eBay. And uh, that's about what we use for uh, coloring our carvings. Hope this helps. Okay, on the deer here is our down and dirty method of trying to get a little color on him, our basic colors. We start out with our dark black walnut and put his nose in. I hit his eyes real dark up close you know inside the ear lay down the base of the skull hold your airbrush real close when you're trying to get something real dark real you know precise and then you see i back up away from it and i'm fogging the top of his forehead because i want it a little bit darker than the rest of his body the muscle tone i i, I don't like a hard line there i kind of like to do a fog dark line in there doing the shadows in the stump uh, so you can see the wood grain in it. Once we get all our dark laid down, as uh, we'll get our gold note, give it a quick fog over the top, and uh, I try not to put any stain on the top of his horn. About halfway down, I spray the, about the bottom half of the horn, but the top half I don't put nothing on. And then we call it done. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. Happy carving.